this thing, this monster we've created, its powers haven't even been realized to their full extent. The sanctity of my monster preserve must not be violated. Everybody, come on out. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah. I mean, after what happened last time, I think we should be. Yeah, you know what happened last time. So here we are again out in the Monster Madhouse movie area to show you some more monster movies tonight on MonsterMadhouse.com. Monster Movies. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Check us out on MySpace. We gave him a free can of soup for saying that. Can of soup, yeah. So anyway, we got another movie for you tonight. Another bad movie, but actually, these are not bad movies. They are not misunderstood. That's a bunch of garbage. The story's pretty deep, actually. You know what one. I'm saying? This yes. one tonight, this is a classic with Boris Karloff and some other people. This is called The Ghoul. The Ghoul. The Ghoul. The Ghoul. The Ghoul. I know a guy had that on a mug. Dude, yeah, dude had that on the mug. <laughs> hey, man, you know this clown? I took him to the Super Bowl and he brought a spoon, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what's wrong with that? He's a clown, what do you expect? Oh, the I'm bowl. I'm a basketball game, you brought a potato. What do you want? Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Anyway, the ghoul is was made in like 19 something, 37? 33, I 33. believe. Yeah, I think so. Did you have your technology with you? Well, of course. We're gonna get Lizard Man to pull up some technology, but let's first watch the first part of the ghoul. Oh.
don't want to buy no line, no, no nothing. Mr. Dragore, please. Oh, him. No sound, please. After two years, I find you. I want the eternal light. You found me too late. It's no longer mine. I can kill with this from the end of the room. No lies, please. You cannot kill in England, Mahmoud. They, they get down their doors here and hang them. I have not come alone. If I hang, there are others. The eternal light goes back to the tomb from which you stole it. But I tell you, I have not got it. Please, I am not a child. I... I sold it. To whom did you sell it? To Professor Morland. That robber of the dead. Has he sold it? He did not buy to sell. What then? Like you, Mahmoud. She believes. Believes? He believes that the eternal light will open for him the gates of paradise? Even so, he gave the best part of his fortune for it. And very soon he will know whether or not he was right. What do you mean? Professor Morland is dying. Then you think it will be buried with him? I'm sure of it. We have only got to wait until he is dead. Anubis. Opener of the way. Where can I find Mr. Brown? Who is it? Come in or go out. have to go up soon if you want to see him again. Curious house, this. Curious owner. Yes, but I suppose a great Egyptologist can't be expected to be like other people. Well, he'll be like a great many other people soon. That's not a very sympathetic thing to say. Well, I'm not a sympathetic man. Want a drink? That's, uh, across the hall, isn't it? I dare say. Thanks. September 22nd, 1931. Daily Journal. Who are 
Maxi Lab. I'm here. Is the door shut? It is. No listeners. None. The curtains. They are drawn. Come nearer. This man Brackman. Watch, Brackman. You were always suspicious. Have you ever trusted a living soul? Only fools. I trust you. Better to trust in the spirit than in the flesh. I put my trust in my own gods. And now, when I am dead, my funeral, you will bury me at dusk in the clothes I told you. He will place the figure of Anubis at the west of the inner chamber. I will. And on the night of the full moon, at the first hour, I will make my offering of the eternal light to our newest opener of the ways. If I have done well in his sight, those fingers will close over the jewel, and he will open to me the gates of immortality. The hand of a heathen image will now come to life. Ah, oh, the bandage. The bandage. Look. This is the eternal light. It must rest in my hand. A man will know find peace who robs his heirs. Bandage my hand. The eternal light must lie with me in the tomb. They are afraid of me. I'm afraid for you. If this should leave me, then you'll have reason to fear. For when the full moon strikes the door of my tomb, I will come back. You hear? I will come back to kill. Bandage my hand. Yeah. Wow. That was good. <laughs> Not really, but you know, everything was black and white back then. Lizard man, pull up some of your technology. Well, you got I that? Mean, it was really, it, was a, it wasn't black and white. It was. Well, step forward. Man. It was Nobody perfectly in color. Here back here. Hold it on. Was, it was perfectly in color. Now, it, back in the day, everything was black and white. And, or before 1930, whatever, it was everything 
silent. Right. Yeah, yeah, people didn't talk. And in real life. We, they played with what music, happened? yeah. What's his face? Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. silent film. It was, yeah, that's why they used music. So pull through this. The clock is oh, ticking. What oh, do you got here? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we got all kinds of stuff. What do you, uh... What do you, what, let me see. give so me some then, info on this movie. This, uh, let's see, on this movie. Because on other shows, they sit there and tell you who was the director and who made it and what other the movies they were in. Oh, yeah. Who cares? We're watching this for the first time. Well, uh, 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 this is about the professor who is played by Boris Karloff. It's a familiar sounding name. Hmm. Uh, anyway, he's got this guy. Him, uh, oh, uh, by the way, he's, uh, uh, he, he, he's also an Egyptologist, which you can never find when you need one. Egyptologist? Yes, what apparently else? they're all in Egypt. What, what, what is he called again in the movie? Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a he's a a, a professor, uh, uh, Henry um, something. Something, yes. Henry, Henry. something. His yeah. name's Henry. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Let's see. It says, uh, oh, yes, he's going to, he's tampering with the powers of rejuvenation through using ancient jewels. Ancient jewels. Yes. Jeez, yes. Man. That's what I always. And that tell. works. Like when I that go on a date. Works. So why do I always tell the girls that hey, do you like to handle ancient jewels? All right, bad joke. Bad joke. But anyway. Cut off your jewels. Monster Madhouse is showing you the ghoul for reasons. They're scientific. Where's your thing? Oh, right. So, He's reading scientific so, words. Yeah. Well, Information. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want to give away too much. I mean, in the meantime, you know, he's he's going to have people that are going to. Interlopers are going to interfere. And Wait, interlopers? You know, what's yeah. an interloper? Everybody wants to. When you got jewels, people want to steal them. That's <laughs> that's giving away too much. Interlopers. Yeah, Let's interlopers. Let's go back to the interlopers yeah. versus the ghoul. All over. Make out a certificate. Heart failure. What was the idea of bandaging his hand like that? I cannot say. He had many a queer fancy. I'll be round in the morning to sign the certificate. I'll no be leaving my master's side till his body is laid to rest.
Where are you going? To feed the lamp that is to burn inside. Wait. You're leaving the key inside. Aye. That was another of his queer fancies. Kind of lope right into the scene and take over. You gotta watch out for interlopers. Yes, you Come do. Come on back here for a second. It's like a gang of clowns. Go for the jugular. It's nice to be here again in the dungeon. But you it's know what? Show. Here's the thing. These movies deal with monsters and villains and spooky stuff and bad guys. You can always tell who the bad guy is, who's up to no good. Because you know what they're threatening really with? The thing that everyone fears. Beady eyes. Besides spiders and beady eyes. Uh, his death! Oh, yeah. Death! And I think he's coming. He's back. Oh, he's glad to he's see back. It. I'm a madhouse friend. He's oh. back. Slim Reaper! I am the Slim! Pony Slim. Slim Reaper! The what original the Slim. Shady. Slim Reaper. You ain't here for us. You're not here for us, are you? No, of course not. Oh, he ain't here for us. Uh, I love these guys. They bring me lots of work. Well, I'll tell you what, in this movie, there's a lot of people, man. They're meeting, their, they're, they're meeting their maker. You know, this guy's family goes way back to the Reaper. Oh, we got many, many bones in my family. <laughs> the Reaper family. We got many, many bones. You got to watch out for these people. You do know? they all die a lot? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. do die a lot. They do die it's a lot. Thing. You're alive. Die You're alive, alive until That's you up. die. That's kind of a strange fact there. You know, come on up here for a second, Mr. Man. I want you to look right into the thing right here. No. No. I want you to eyeball. Now look, you got your technology? I want you to give us some more. Oh, on 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 that thing again? Yeah, oh, tell us man. some more about the glue. Oh, well, it was directed by this guy named T. Hayes Hunter. You know who he was? He the guy who directed the, the glue. The guy who directed the glue. Yeah, yeah. He loves T. Hayes's. That's wild, dude. What was his name? Uh, T. Hunt, T. Hayes Hunter. T. Hayes Hunter. Yes, yes. You know what that T stands for, don't you? Thank I don't you know. Man. I'm asking you. Yeah, I mean, we don't know nothing. T. Just T. Just T. T, man. Kind of like, kind of like the symbol for Prince. Mr. T. 1933, it was T on the Monster Madhouse. Free Mr. T. Something. Well, since, since death is in the house, we're going to come back to the movie and we're going to bring the doctor in. So we'll see you after another part of the ghoul. Uh. You may regret this, Lang.
I want you to stay here and watch that man with a club foot. Oh, I'm not a detective, Mr. Broughton. One more word from you, Davis, and you're out of work. I have reason to believe that he has stolen a valuable piece of property. He may make an effort to get rid of it. Watch him and telephone me at my office if he leaves the house. Very good, sir. From Rapson. Ten shillings if you'll drive me to Yaxford Station in time to catch the five o'clock train. I'll oblige you, Governor. I was going straight back as it was. Can you direct me to Blandford Street, please? Follow the tram lines close on a mile and then turn right at the church. I'm obliged to you. It looks as if I'll have to walk. You might do worse. There's a grand moon. It's full.
呀。I'll be all right here. I'll show you the way. Well, don't stand about. Come inside. We're going to the library. I may be old-fashioned, but I feel awkward when I am not introduced to people. I'm sorry, I forgot you didn't know your clients by sight. This is Miss Holland. How do you do? I was expecting a telephone message from you. Oh, I was on my way to call you up when the most extraordinary thing happened. And this is Miss Caney. How do you do? You're a surprise, Broughton. I have a great deal of business to clear up down here. This house has needed a woman for about 25 years. <laughs> ah, no, I've blinded myself. You haven't wasted much time in getting here, Mr. Morland. No, just a little too much, perhaps. Whatever do you mean? Really, you're the rudest man alive. Oh, pretty pussy. How horrible. It's stuffed. I dare say you know your own business best, but why you should want to bring a parson? A pure accident. We met at the gates. So and... naturally, you brought him in. Broughton, I can stand a certain amount, but no more. Ah, oh, come, come, don't let's make a battle of it. You stay here in the car. No. I shall be among the trees, watching. Back up, let's all back up. I'll call the doctor. Come on, back up. Doctor, doctor. He's coming in. He's coming, coming in hot. Doctors, they all got their expensive equipment. Action! Always got their expensive equipment oh, in. Riding around on bicycles and sports cars and stuff, you know. I'm sorry, did I hear you? You know, I don't know where he is. There he comes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, is that a bike? Hey! hey. Come on, come on. What's going on, Doc? What's happening, dude? This is my brake. You know, dude, we got Mr. Bill on your No, brake. that's your brake right, right there, there on the hand. Well, what's the problem? Here? We are showing a movie, Doc, and we are scared to death. We got death in the house. Get more sad over here. here. Remember him, your partner? How you oh, doing, my friend? Yeah. He helped me out with so much work. Death. Give me time. Death and the doctor, together in the same picture, you know, just like you see all over the place. So. Guys, I want you to pay attention to what's going on in this movie. This director T, what's his name? Hmm. Hunter. Mr. Yeah. Mr. T. There's a lot of depictions of how people meet their ends in the ghoul. 
He takes you away there. Now, you ever encounter a ghoul? Oh, those are foul creatures. Yeah, that's, that's his department. So in the hospital, you never see a ghoul, other than the doctors. No, yeah, the doctors are ghouls. No, because they want the ghoul takes away the flesh. It takes away the flesh, but they want the money too. Yeah. They want riches. They want your greedy. Those are vengeful ghosts. They want Racist. to have. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they want to get something from you. Yeah. So you took something to from them. Now it's revenge. Let's go to another thing uh, with Boris Karloff. This is Boris Karloff in a segment from the movie Black Sabbath. <laughs> Come closer, please. I've something to tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you do? This is Black Sabbath. What's the matter, woman? Can't I fondle my own grandson? Whoa, man, that's freaky, man. That was a cool three chords, too. You see that part where he's holding that little boy, <laughs> his grandson? He's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking at me? Can't a man fondle his own grandchild? No, you're not allowed to. He was a vampire. He was a vampire. You know what vampires do? They drink you Thank apparently you. we learned something about that. Yeah, so Boris Karloff was in like, he was in like four or five horror movies. Man. It's more than that though, it's probably like 50 or 60. So many things, but that was a very scary thing. Let's cut back to The Ghoul from 1933. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was an intimate friend of Professor Moller. You better come in. You seem to be giving a party. Oh. Thank you. My name is Aga Ben Dragore. An Egyptian. An Arab. I don't remember having heard your name. I did not flatter myself that you would. But I knew Professor Mullen some years ago, in Egypt. I heard of his death, and of his burial in my own faith. And I hoped, as I am leaving England tomorrow, that I might be allowed to visit his tomb. Scared of a dead man in his tomb? Shame on yourself. 
Or your child that your knee should rattle at the talk of a madman? Look your enemy in the face. It's the fear the big door has got you. And will hold you fast till you stare it down. Do dead men walk? I'm no thinking a dead man will cross my path tonight. Twilight Zone stuff has been happening at the fortune machine with the devil thing on it. I said we'd never get out of here today. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Make my coffee black like my heart. 29 Diner. Great place to be trapped. It's never going to get out of here. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. Look at ah! Here comes the guy that runs the place. Well, thank you for letting us park our bus here on the way into the thing. We're in the Twilight Zone, 29 Diner in Fairfax. I can barely eat this one. Hold it together. Mm. And suddenly just got here. We missed all the aliens. Isn't that was the eye with the third eye. We got came and went, got Bill Chase's head in back. He got the mole. 15 minutes away from home. 
You guys got a website? Absolutely. 29diner.com. Check it out. <laughs> ABC food. Yeah. How do we get out of here again? Yeah. <laughs> We're so hot. Lafayette. Check out the website. Love you guys. Best food in town. Best food in town. Thanks, sir. Oh, wait, we got, we got packed off here. Look out. There he you is. see this man? Then you've seen this man. We'll make it back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You look like Jim Morrison. I I <laughs> make that the thing that's in charge. The thing that's in charge. The milkshake Yes, it's an alien. It is a multi mixer. It is a multi mixer. And that's why we can't leave it. You are our permanent guests of the 29 diner. <laughs> Now I will show you how we make coffee in the desert, underneath the stars. But you don't make it yourself, do you? No, of course not. A Circassian slave, lovely as sin, cooks it for us, kneeling. And if it is not to our liking... I know! She's stripped to the waist and lashed for miles across the Sahara. Where she is finally eaten by locusts, and rightly. Now, take this canister and do exactly as I tell you. And if I fail? The Yorkshire Moors are just behind us. Now, six spoonfuls. One. <gasps> Two. Three. Four. Five. Ah! Be of you. Get your arms away from me. What's the matter with you? Are you mad, eh? No. Terror. Stark terror. Oh, then I've caught it. You stay here. I'll look after him. If you must look after somebody, why look further? Eh? Come on, then. Rafe! That limp, I'd swear to it anywhere. Here, did you give a note to this Gather young Gather up your things and get out of here. The master, I've seen him. You... Full scream. I did. That's the last time I'll ever try to make coffee in a strange house. That man with a limp. Who was he? Lang. Your uncle's servant. Well, he seemed mad to me.
Yes. And probably dangerous. You others had better go into the library. I'll have a word with him. Yes, come along. Mr. Broughton understands the men. I was tempted. I was tempted, but I did not fall. I did not fall. The thing's safe. I swear it. When you told me you'd come back from the grave, how could I believe you? I never knew such things could be. matter with you? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. I have. I saw Morland as plainly as I see you. I'm going to mix myself a drink. Betty, just a minute. I have an idea they're trying to scare us out of this house. There's no use blinding ourselves to the fact. There must be something pretty big at stake. Something that depends on getting rid of us? That's how it looks to me. Well, what are we going to do?
Interlopers. Interlopers, man. Now, if y'all were in one of these horror movies, would you live or would you die? Would you be a victim? Uh, I have no soul, so I can't die. Generally. As soon as anything creepy's going on, just go check it out really quick. But you know what happens? It always happens if you're in a movie and you got a chick with you and you're running, she's gonna fall down. You gotta stop and get her. Hey, and guys fall down too. And the monster comes to get you. A lot of times that's what happens. But the monsters always too, they're always after the woman. Mm, not always. No. We like the clothes. I don't know about the rest of the Sometimes. People. We like their clothes. You know why? Let's go to another part of the ghoul. Who's there? Betty, I'm going down to that tomb and find out well, whether it's... Still... the only way we've got of finding out what's going on around here. Well, I don't want to be left here alone. Can I come too? There's nothing wrong with your nerve. Come on. I'll put on a pillow and some thicker shoes. All right. Is this yours? Yes. I'll keep an eye on Broughton. Every chance of seeing things if you lower scotch at that pace. Wait, I'll come down.
you want? There was somebody in the library. Who? I don't know. The door, it shut. It shut. Don't I... scream. Oh, that's what I need. The command in your wonderful voice. Come with me. I think you've gone far enough with your insinuations. Yes, and I may go a great deal farther. What is it? What's the matter? I've seen him. Now perhaps you'll believe what I told you. Get me a glass of water quickly, will you? See if you can find Miss Caney, will you? Sometimes. I felt his hands on me. That's why I know it was no ghost. It was no ghost. Look at the clock. It's nearing the hour. I know where you'll find him now. He's gone back to the tomb, to his heathen gods. And you and I will follow in there. Wait a minute. What's his doctor's telephone number? Yuxford, 72. I'll go no nearer. I'll go no nearer. I can see a shadow moving. I'll go no nearer. Well, then, go back. What about it, Betty? Do we go on? Yes, of course. I thought you'd say that.
Just a dirty crook. You'd better get out of my way. Your hand, eh? So that's how it was done. I wouldn't come any nearer. I don't have to. Look, if you please. Thank you. Come on now. I phoned the doctor, I told him to bring the police. They ought to find us somehow. Well, even if they do come, how can they break down that door? They'll find a way. in charge didn't understand the case. I'm afraid of catalepsy. Really? Borland was buried alive. Oh, Mr. Dragore, what were those shots? Out of my way. Where are the others? Leave me alone! Ah! Oh. I rather thought you might be leaving in a hurry with something in your pocket that doesn't belong to you. Hand it over. You win. That woman! There she is! Come now. Oh, you put up your gun, you fool. I tell you, she's got it. Come on, then. Stop! 
Now, Miss Kenny, if you please. I don't think so. You fool. If either of you two horrible men so much as move, in it goes. But you don't know the value of that jewel. I don't care for the value. It'll go. And if you shoot, I'll go with it. I mean it. Down 30 feet. And about 60 feet of water. And, and, and then Australia. I can't see to tie this. That light seems much lower. Good. You can't breathe in there. The cartridge. It's here. If only. If only. I've had enough of this, Miss Kenny. Supposing I'm ready to shoot and take the risk. You'd be taking a bigger risk than you think. I'll take that gun, thank you. Now look here. That'll do. Now, what's the trouble? This. They're after it. All of them. It belongs. I'll carry her to the house. Wow, man. <laughs> okay, we're down to the last. What the hell was that? It was a balloon. Did you see that? It was a UFO. <laughs> it was a that UFO. That was an orb. Well, it's a UFO. Pretty it's sure that was an orb. <laughs> it was no. cool. Anything, if you don't know what it is, it's a UFO. Because it's oh. unidentified. Right, yeah, yeah. That's true enough. My car has been a UFO before. Nope. Because nope. nobody knew who I, what I, what, what the hell was that? Yeah, I saw something flying in the sky just tonight, and I could have sworn it was a plane, but I couldn't prove it was no, a plane. No, you can't prove it. Good so anyway, it. so now... What is that? <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, the is goal. that an anal probe? No, no, hold on. No, no, this is a kid's show. Hold on, we're not doing it. Hold on, guys. <laughs> I have... I, all right, hold on, guys. I have, a, I have a thing I have to go into. <laughs> the ghoul. The name the ghoul has inspired a lot of things, man, including the ghoul. This is the book about the ghoul. This dude was the horror host back in the 60s and the 70s, man. You remember the guy with the crazy, crazy hair and he had on the glasses with one lens missing. Here he is, there's a good picture of the ghoul. Check him out, man. This is the dude, man. Let's get into the light here. That's the ghoul, man. Now, I never got to meet the ghoul, but a lot of people, especially a lot of, especially a lot of Polacks over in, uh, in uh, Ohio, they he worked do. with another great green they, guy, too. Okay. <laughs> See, we're in a TV studio. We don't have to get down here to like the other. Hey! You hear that? It wasn't me, it was the balloon. It was that clown. Yeah, this camera's like yeah, too low. Well. I'm like almost on my, I'm on, let me get on my knees. Every time they fart, it smells funny. So the ghoul, man, was very cool. This book was sent to me by Barbara. 
Up in Ohio. Right Barbara. She used to be, she was the ghoul's wife, man, back in the day. And she's cool like the ghoul pool. And, you know, he said a lot of crazy stuff, man. What were his catchphrases, man? Like, turn blue. Turn blue. They're coming to get here. you, Balmer. <laughs> no, 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 not him. Uh, another oh, term uh, he used a lot was uh, scratch glass. Scratch glass, turn blue. Has something to do with the ghoul, man. Up in Ohio, man. Let's check out a couple of scenes of the ghoul. The ghoul. Oh, 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 oh. his face doing his bit to do his imitation of Brooke Shields. Oh, look at the brows on that guy going right for the eyes. A better imitation of Brooke I've never seen, though. So there it is, Channel 61's first annual. Get in that rock. If at all possible, please contact me before showing this so I can tell some friends. Hey, Bob, we're going to show your film now! Roll the film, Julia! Ah, oh, here he is, on, on the old uh, Toro! Okay, kid, off he goes, puts it in gear. Hey, gr and they gave me the job of getting you in I there. I get and I'm not going in Ain't nothing to believe! I'm telling you, see, we've been 
bad movies on the show. Thank you, but this is the worst. This is today's movie. Can you see that for? I mean, can you make it out? I'm telling you, as a public service, we're gonna destroy that mama before we get it on the air. So if you're ready, we got a boom boom, and we're gonna let loose with that. You ain't not gonna believe, gang. I'll tell you. Whoa! Side skinny. That mole on Richard's face moved. Did you ever notice that? Only cat in the business with a traveling mole. That's right, the beginning of the season was on the right side of his face. About what? Three or four years in, started going up, and by the time he left the series, that mole had gone to the left side of his face. We Chip jokes, I'll tell you. Okay, okay, so fine. Fine. We, we got, got the it. top eight. Now that's it. This is it. Now, now we're talking class. Now we are talking style. Okay, look at that. Even if you didn't embarrass us, I want to tell you, would you look at? Wait a minute, Mr. Announcer, please. Aren't these a little long? Well, they look fine here. Just tell you what we'll do. You, you take them like this. Little modification. Little like modification. Okay. Okay. Doesn't it feel tighter already? Like, yeah, I mean, I feel it's a tighter. I mean, it's like, really swell. It's cutting off. Okay, that. guys, cut it. it. What are you doing? Here? Me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho. <laughs> wow, man, the ghoul was very cool. Yeah, very cool ghoul, yeah. Very cool ghoul. Yeah, cool so let's cut back to another part. Actually, this is the last part of the movie, The Ghoul. Duffy's Oh, man. Oh, man, it's over. Daddy. Don't worry. Get this kid to work. Why kids? Man. Jesus. Yeah, I that's what a ghoul really does. Comes back from the dead. Anyway, the movie's the over. Goes. The movie's over. Kills your body, consumes your soul. <laughs> what can you do, man? With this movie, we had to walk you through this, man. We were there with you. The ghoul. You know, what a cool Vengeance. Movie. Vengeance! So, that ends our time here in the 1930s. Or was it the 1930s? You know, these guys have no concept of where we are or what we're doing. None of us do. We just do this. So a lot of times, you know, we're seeing this stuff for the first time too. You know, I saw it like years ago, but it's not like I sit at home and watch these movies over and over. Jesus, you want to die. You ever try to put one of these black and white movies on like with the kids watching? The kids are like, can we turn on something else? <laughs> it wasn't the movie, it was the time. This Everything is, was black and white. It's black and white and everybody's rolling their R's. The kids don't know what that is. So you have to make it interesting. So you will notice green screen characters and monsters in this movie added into the movie. So uh, anyway, we will uh, catch you next time on Monster Man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time. If we didn't catch it last time, we will catch you next time. <laughs>